Most celebrities are adept at handling interviewers between profile pieces, press junkets, and red carpet appearances, fielding questions from a variety of outlets as an essential part of the Hollywood job description. But in certain cases, even skilled interviewers have crossed the line with famous folks, pushing them to walk out on the conversation, or hang up as the case may be. Here are a few times celebrities had to cut and run. Robert Pattinson Back in 2009, rumors had just started to swirl about a romance between actor Robert Pattinson and his Twilight co-star Kristen Stewart. Pattinson was publicizing the Twilight saga New Moon when he stopped by Ryan Seacrest's radio show on air with Ryan Seacrest. After exchanging niceties, Seacrest hit Pattinson with a direct question about his relationship with Stewart. What, what do you say to your fans who are desperate to know about you and your co-star Kristen? What, what can you tell them? Pattinson's publicist quickly put the kibosh on the interview after only a minute and a half, signaling for Seacrest to be quiet and for Pattinson to leave. Always a gentleman, Pattinson at least tried to end the interview on a positive note. I was just <laughs> cut off for the first time ever. <laughs> the thing I can say to them is, watch New Moon, it's amazing. What? What? <laughs> Th hey, thank you. Paris Hilton Heiress and reality show veteran Paris Hilton was not pleased during a 2011 interview with ABC's Good Morning America when correspondent Dan Harris boldly asked her this question. Do you ever worry about your moment having passed? <laughs> you want to wrap up? This was after he'd already asked Hilton some pretty blunt questions. Do you worry at times that the people who have followed in your footsteps, uh, like Kim Kardashian, are overshadowing you? No, not at all. So at this point, she was already a little annoyed. After talking to her publicist, Hilton reminded her tormentor that she was a show business veteran and then said, Just like any other business person or someone in the industry, it's always important to reinvent yourself and come up with new projects. Though we're all still kind of waiting for that to happen. Donald Trump the president is famous for walking out on interviewers. During his 2016 presidential campaign, a correspondent for an NBC affiliate asked him about some allegations that he was both racist and sexist. Thank you very much. How, how do you respond to that? Uh, I am the least racist person you've ever met. In November 2017, CBS This Morning correspondent John Dickerson asked Trump about allegations that former President Barack Obama had his phones tapped. When Dickerson reminded Trump that he called Obama sick and bad, the president basically said that everyone is entitled to an opinion and then shut the interview down. But I want to know your opinion. You're the president of the United okay. States. It's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's not all. Once in 1990, Trump left an interview with CNN after he was asked about his casino businesses. Exactly. Do the, talk do the interview with somebody else, really. Yeah, you don't need this. Do it with somebody else. In 2003, he also ditched Sasha Baron Cohen, who was in character as Ali G on The Ali G Show, after he tried to talk Trump into investing in ice cream gloves. Good luck, folks. It's been nice seeing you. You take care of yourself, okay? Who is going to be in on that? Well, it sounds like an interesting... We've got that P. Diddy is going to be in it. Good. Trump later tweeted, I never fall for scams. I am the only person who immediately walked out of my Ali G interview. According to the video, however, he did listen to the whole pitch before making his exit. Robert Downey Jr. An April 2015 conversation between UK's Channel 4 news presenter Krishnan Guru Murthy and Avengers star Robert Downey Jr. turned awkward fast after Guru Murthy asked about Downey Jr.'s stint in prison, to the actor's visible discomfort. Once the conversation turned to Downey Jr.'s earlier battles with drugs, this happened. I'm sorry, I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. Okay, that's okay. Bye. Guru Murthy justified his questions in an op-ed for The Guardian, writing, He could have engaged more with the earlier questions, and I'd never have time for the ones he didn't like. Downey Jr. appeared on the Howard Stern radio show to reflect on the encounter. What I have to do in the future is just have to give myself permission to say, that is more than likely a syphilitic parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Joan Rivers in 2014, the late Joan Rivers appeared on CNN's newsroom to discuss her book, Diary of a Mad Diva. Things got off to a shaky start when correspondent Frederica Whitfield called Rivers' work on Fashion Police mean and noted the shock value of the fur coat Rivers wore on the cover of her book. Are you wearing leather shoes? Yeah! And shut no, up! I'm oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? As the interview continued in pretty much in the same vein, Rivers told Whitfield that she was negative and stormed out. You are not the one to interview a person who does humor. Sorry. Are we serious? Rivers later explained to the rap that she felt justified in ending the interview, saying, She did not seem to understand we were talking about a comedy book and not the transcripts from the Nuremberg trial. Shannon Tweed Kiss frontman Gene Simmons has had his fair share of inappropriate interview moments. 
I think celebrities should basically shut their pie hole. But an especially brutal showing on HLN's Joy Behar show in June 2011 may take the cake. Simmons was appearing with his long-term partner Shannon Tweed to promote the sixth season of their a and &E reality show, Gene Simmons Family Jewels, which chronicled their family's tumultuous life. After Behar questioned Simmons about his alleged cheating, she brought up a rumor that Simmons has slept with 5,000 women over the course of his life. Then she made a pretty tasteless joke. How's your back, Gene? <laughs> my, my back is good. My, sh my schmeckle, not so much. At that point, Tweed decided she'd had enough. Here, big back on. It suits you. Thanks for the question. And yet, despite the obvious discord on display during the interview, Tweed and Simmons got married in October the same year. You promised to love and respect him as long as you both show them. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly NPR's Terry Gross is a respected radio interviewer, but that didn't seem to matter to then Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. In 2003, O'Reilly appeared on Gross's show Fresh Air to discuss his book Who's Looking Out For You. Gross began by asking the famously conservative O'Reilly about comedian Al Franken. Something mm -hmm. Franken says about that in his book. He says, I was having fun not because I enjoyed attacking people gratuitously, but because O'Reilly is a bully and he deserved it. O'Reilly, who was obviously displeased at the line of questioning, became increasingly frustrated as the interview went on. I'll, I'll read what the People magazine thinks. Why? Just why read it? it? Why I, read I it? I guess I want people to hear it. Why? Because it. Why? You'll hear when I'm done. Why? After that, O'Reilly abruptly ended the interview, saying, This is just a hatchet job on me, all right? And I don't like it. And you should be ashamed of yourself. And that is the end of this interview. Gross got the last word in August 2017, just after O'Reilly was fired from Fox News for sexual harassment. On The Tonight Show, she reminisced with host Jimmy Fallon about O'Reilly's behavior. I asked him a few challenging questions about whether he used the microphone to settle scores or to get even with people. Gross went on to describe O'Reilly's meltdown. He said, if you think that's fair, Terry, you should get out of this business. And I'm thinking, one of us still has a program. <laughs> Naomi Campbell ABC News saw an ugly side of notoriously temperamental supermodel Naomi Campbell in April 2010, when they asked her about a diamond she had allegedly received from former Liberian dictator Charles Taylor, who was standing trial for war crimes at the time of the interview. Received a diamond from Charles. You see the diamond, and I'm not going to speak about that. Thank you very much. After the interviewer refused to drop the subject, Campbell decided she'd had enough. Thank you so much. Right. Goodbye. Right. Let's get up. In August of 2010, though, Campbell admitted she'd unknowingly accepted blood diamonds from Taylor after she was subpoenaed and threatened with jail time if she refused to testify. Taylor was eventually sentenced to 50 years in prison for various crimes against humanity. Also, Naomi Campbell was slightly inconvenienced. This is a big inconvenience for me. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.